Let's talk about the surprise Mac Studio update. I'm Artist Wright. Apple had a busy product launch week from the iPad Air to the MacBook Air M4 to the surprise Mac Studio update. Even though it is about time that they have gone in and update these machines, it still come, at least to me anyway, as somewhat of a surprise. And secondly, the silicon they put on inside is also surprising too. And it's also very interesting. The four factor has remained the same, but for the Max variant, we got the M4 generation, which is the current one. For the Ultra, that's supposed to be the most powerful machine they have, we got the M3 generation, which is the previous generation architecture. Now, I have some of my previous testing results that i like to share with you that will probably shed some light on the M4 generation performance and also on the Ultra performance as well. And I still think that the Ultra, it's going to be a really high performance machine, although with some limitation in terms of RAM configuration, I'll share that with you in a little bit. But let's start out with this. I found an article from Ars Technica that Apple have been talking to them and they have said that not every generation Apple Silicon is going to see an Ultra ship. And this certainly makes a lot of sense. However, when many of the ship people, the ship expert were looking at the die for the M3 Max generation, they were saying that there is no interconnect. Apparently there is an interconnect. So we don't know whether the M4 generation is going to suddenly you know develop an interconnect or not and whether the m4 ultra is going to go into for example the mac pro tower instead of like a mac studio that may be something that can still happen down the road at wwdc but we don't know if that's going to be the case or not i don't want to get into too much of the speculation territory so we're not going to talk anymore about that the other thing to consider too about these Macs and especially these ultra silicons that Apple has a number of their buyers and they know how many people are really buying these. And we're talking about the top of the pyramid here. So there's definitely, you know, they're de they are definitely selling less numbers of the ultra Mac studio compared to, you know, the Macs for instance. So obviously this makes sense that not every generation is going to see an ultra SOC. But I mean, I just loved ultra because it just speed up everything that I do. But anyhow, that's another story. The other thing to note is that on the M3 Max generation, there's a couple of things. So the M3 Max, the memory, I believe, cap out at like uh, 128 or like 196. So the fact that Apple have updated all the memories together on the M3 Ultra to like 512 gigabytes of memory is actually really quite impressive the way that how they have gone in and done that. The other thing too is that they have also recertified the M3 Ultra for Thunderbolt 5, whereas the M3 generation in general shift with the Thunderbolt 4 technology connector. So those are just some things to think about. And lastly, the memory bandwidth has been pretty much the same throughout all the Ultra generation SoC, as you can see on the chart right now, which has been more than mighty fast. But anyhow, let's talk about this briefly. So I have some testing results from the previous generation. This is going to be a quick take on that to kind of like show you my point, what I'm thinking here, but I'll leave a link to this full testing video in the description too, if you wanna check out the full form video, which I have done. So the update priority has always and will remain the same. If you want to get the most performance per dollar, start out with the RAM, then you go into the chip family. The RAM itself is going to really dictate this time around what chip family you can choose. Then go in and update SSD storage. And lastly, if you still have fundings left or you still have your budget left and you want to upgrade you can then choose the ship variation most of the time upgrading the ship variation will give you the least performance per dollar spend where upgrading the memory is going to give you the most performance per dollar even though there are some limitations now in terms of memory upgrade which i will share with you later on now let's take a look at lightroom classic this is one to one preview we can see that the m4 max it's beating out the m2 ultra by a little bit there but you got to think about this in one aspect the M4 Max is two generation newer than the M2 Ultra. So M2 Ultra is holding his own just fine. And this is also telling us too that, hey, if you really want a good machine, maybe a used or a refurbished M2 Ultra might be the way to go in this regard, right? Compared to the M3 Ultra. But when we get those machines, we'll do some testing and we're gonna answer all those questions definitely. What about the exporting result? This one can go in and utilize the GPU on the system and the M2 Ultra is still showing up ahead of everything else there, even the Macs. Now, sometimes when the new silicons come out, software can't go in and utilize the available resource on the system well, and it seems like it would be the case here with the Mac silicon compared to, for example, like the Ultra. 
So talking about AI noise reduction, which is a task that's supposed to be running on the GPU, but it's, it's currently running on the NPU, or excuse me, running on the NPU, but it's currently running on the GPU. And we can see there that the Ultra is still performing faster by about like a third of a time. Now you really gotta ask yourself, if you're doing this day in day out, it may be worth the extra money because if you take a look at this variance right here, this is the variance that it's going to be, I believe, about like $25.99 or something like that on the Apple website. So you're taking a look at about $1,400 difference for the speed up in performance. Now, whether that is worth it for you or not, this is an answer that, you know, you have to answer based on your own workflow. But for Capture One, you can see right now that the Ultra is not really doing well at all. So if you're just using Capture One as the predominant software, I would probably say just choose the Max Silicon and choose even like I would always suggest the base max silicon and save yourself the money because timing is pretty much on par with each other as you see there again so this between the base and the updated one it's not really showing that much of a difference by like one minute and the m2 ultra is still holding on just fine there even though it's not the fastest now you got to remember this is two generation behind and is still doing a pretty darn good job what about in photoshop when we do a speed test for instance Ultra is clustering with the M2 and the M1's group generation. You can see right there, but this has more to do with the generation and the frequency that the single core is running more so than just the speed of the ship itself because these are mostly single core. You can see now that when we do a task that combines both RAM, GPU, and also SSD into these, the M4 generation is doing better. So hopefully the M3 is really going to push ahead because the M3 is also pushing ahead of the M2 Ultra already there, as you can see. And when it comes to Photoshop large, I mean, obviously putting more memory in there is going to really help out a lot, but you start to get the idea. After Effect, M4 Max is beating out the M2 Ultra, but only by a little margin right there, as you can see. But here's this case. I think that the M3 Ultra is still going to perform, and I think it may be surprising to see it perform and beat out like the rest of these machines. So I think this kind of gives us a glimpse into the M3 Ultra performance. I think that if Apple have done M4, that would be fantastic. It would be even faster than the M3 Ultra, but they chose not to do that for a reason. And hopefully they'll skip the M4 Ultra and just go to M5, but we shall see. So let's take a look at some of the bits about the machine. I mean, looking at the performance is really kind of cool there to see the internal. So I thought I'd go there, but let's compare these two machine together. So the Max. It's generally going to run on, I believe, an aluminum heatsink with possibly a copper core, whereas on the Ultra, it's just running on a totally copper heatsink in general. So it's gonna dissipate heat a lot better. So that's something to think about. The two USB ports on the front on the Max is still USB-C, whereas on the Ultra is a Thunderbolt 5. So again, remember the M3 generation technically shipped with Thunderbolt 4, but Apple recertified this with Thunderbolt 5. So you have Thunderbolt 5 that are running on separate bus, which is really great. The number of display support. So the Max will run up to five displays, the Ultra will run up to eight displays, but do look at the specification a little bit more on their spec page, because if you're running a higher resolution, for example, six and 8K, that does reduce the total displays that you can really run on the system. So I would check that before. Now, what we're gonna simply do is go and configure the Max here and take a look at some of the options that are available to us, which I thought is interesting. So with this, you can pay a $300 upgrade to bump up to the next silicon. And the only reason why you want to do that is if you want to upgrade to get more than 36 gigabyte of memory. Because this base one, you only have 36. This is the part where I say it's such a huge lock-in when you really go through it this way because you can't really go and choose the memory that you want. This is very similar to the M3 generation that we've seen. M4 uh, Max laptop is pretty much the same thing. M4 Max and M3 Max, similar story. So if I go to the Max Silicon there, I'm paying $500 more because I'm not only paying for the Silicon upgrade, but I'm also paying for the memory upgrade as well. That's $200 more and there's really no other way to do it. But once I do that, I have enabled myself access to 64 and 128 gigabytes of memory. Say you want more, well, you have to go to the Ultra ship at that point. And lastly, I do want to point out that on the Max, you can only go up to eight terabyte SSD, whereas on the Ultra, you can then unlock 16 terabyte SSD for a whopping $4,600. That's a lot of money. I'm not sure who needs that, but if you do, you now have that option. So if we choose the base Ultra Silicon, it starts with 96, but we can't go 128. And the next one up 
is 256. Personally, I would love to go to 128 because my M2 Ultra right now has 128 and I feel like I'm in a really good spot for usage there. I don't really feel that I need the 256, but for my personal machine that I'm gonna keep and use in the studio for all the editings and everything, I've gone in with 256 anyway, so that's the configuration that's gonna be my personal machine. But all the other machines, I'll still have in the studio to run tests and just to you know, have and everything. Some of these are gonna be going to my clients also. So that's also a really great thing. I get to test a little bit more machines there. All right, so that's something to note about the memory. And when we go to like the Ultra, that unlocks a couple of things. So it unlocks 96, 256, as I mentioned before, and also the 512 gigabytes of memory to which your machine can then definitely cost a lot of money. And I don't think that anybody really needs any more than that. But for me, it is such a dilemma. Like I said, even for me, this is kind of somewhat confusing because I feel that 96 should be good, but I have 128 gigabytes right now and I definitely don't want to go down. Even though for the most part, like, you know, I'm not really peaking on the memory pressure as much and 96 might do okay. But anyway, we're going to see when I do testing, I might end up with the 96 gigabyte machines, like who knows. But anyhow, that's some thoughts on like the memory configuration. You can really get a lot of memory put into these machines and you're definitely paying like a huge sum for this. But the other thing too, the reason why I recommend upgrading memory first is that you can't really go in and plug in extra memory modules. This is pretty much all that you have on the system right there. Whereas on the SSD, plug in external storage, plug in a DAS, plug in a NAS, plug in an SSD or whatever you may have. And you can always expand the storage there for versus the memory. You're kind of just lock in. So choose the memory wisely when it comes to your system. But I think that for most people, just getting this base configuration with 96 gigabytes of memory, one terabyte SSD, is pretty much going to be a really fantastic starting point for many. And lastly, I do want to share that for those of you that might need 512 gigabytes of memory, you're wondering like who might need that, anybody who's doing a lot of like scientific work, anybody who's doing a lot of large, for example, like Logic Music Library might need that. Although this machine does lack the ability for you to plug in extra cards. So you're going to be relying on um, the Thunderbolt 5 with Sonic connection box and so forth. So that's something that a lot of Music Pro may not necessarily consider this. And that leaves some room for the Mac Pro. And in the M2 generation, the Mac Pro uses the same chip as the Ultra and is priced a little bit higher. So I'm wondering, like I said, this time around, whether we're gonna see an M4 Ultra Mac Pro or not. And I think that would be fairly interesting to see it happen, but hopefully not because I mean, it's hard to just really spend a lot of money to buy these machines and find out a few months later on like, hey, there's something better now in a different form factor, right? Anyway, that's my thought about the new Mac Studio or the upgraded Mac Studio and the new silicons on the inside. I think M3 is gonna be really great. And like I said, once I get the machine in, I'll start testing it. We'll share the result right away. I'll do a compilation video at the end so you can see how they perform against each other. But for the most part, I think that if you are a creative pro, I would probably say, especially with photography, Max might do just fine, especially now that we're doing a lot of work uploading it to the cloud to do like AI calling, AI editing and everything. The only thing we really need to do is some minor adjustment and export in the end. And I think Max is gonna be able to handle that job just fine because you're already saving a lot of time doing work on the front end anyway. Those are some of my thoughts. I know I'll have more coming soon, but anyway, if you have any questions or comments, please share them with me. Give this a like, subscribe and hit the bell if you're new. I'm Art and I thank you for your time.